From a place we're not allowed to reveal, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. How is this possible, man? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio with wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. It can be anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game. Long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, I'm going to kick your ass the hell off the phone if Dean hasn't done it first. It's that simple. All you do is call us here at 1-800-5800. I want that to sink in. All you do is call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. And our international line, if you're listening to us online from anywhere in the world, you can call us here and be on the air live from wherever you are. Here's the phone number, uh, including all the uh, various codes you need to dial in. The country code for the United States is 1. Our area code in SoCal is 323. And then our international phone number is 520-6211. I'll give you that whole package again. one 323-520-6211. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Joe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing great. Tom, huh, man. I was just leaving work just about 15 minutes ago, and this Bob was listening to her new music, and I listen to you loud every day. Uh-huh. And she turned up her music, and I turned you up. We went back and forth. She ended up rolling her windows up and turning her air on. I love that. She don't know who she missing, Tom. Let me tell you, I listen to you religious every day. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's fantastic, Joe. I really think it's great. And I'm glad you're fighting for our show. That's the important thing. Exactly. I I even have my seven-year-old nephew listening to you, Tom. I love that. I, I, I'm trying to teach him my, you know. Is I, he lear- is he learning the lessons here? Yes, he is learning, Tom. You know, I go, I take him out every Friday night with me. We go go kart racing, and I tell him, man, you don't need no broad. I say, <laughs> nah, you don't need them. You, <laughs> you, you use double, use them and double them. That's all you need to know. That's exactly right. You That's know? all it takes. Yeah. Fantastic, Joe. I'm so proud. All right, thanks, Tom. I just thought I'd let you know that. I listen to you re- religious every day, and I, t- I turn people on to you all the time. Joe, all you call time. me. I'm sorry? I turn all of my male friends on to you. That I didn't uh-huh. even listen to you. I, man, you guys need to listen to him. Because half wow. of them are married. He's DTD, that bitch. That's right. Exactly. That's the best thing I did the beginning of this year, Tom. I was married for five years. I said, nah, I got to give me some more tail. Very nice. How did, how did that bitch, but yeah, Joe, we got to watch it. We're on the air. <laughs> oh, sorry about that, Tom. I, I don't need to hear all that, you know? I understand. She, she needs to take that on. <laughs> That's right. She could be somebody else's problem now. Exactly. I like the, you know, 18, 19-year-old girls now. They're more <laughs> fun. I, I don't think I'll ever stop liking 18, 19-year-old girls. What man would? Yeah. That's. That's what they want. I'd, I'd use them for a couple weeks and throw them to the curb. That's right. Yeah, you like crumple them up like a used Kleenex. Yep. Use them like a piece of toilet paper and gone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I 
even have, uh, I'm on my work cell phone now, but I have my personal cell phone in 310 area code, and they ask me what I do, and I tell them it's none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need to know what I do. Just, you know, I, when I go to the ATM, I act like I pull more money out than I do. I don't, <laughs> you know how you have your philosophy, $40? I have mine, no more than 20 <laughs> Very and, nice. They want to go to nice restaurants. I say, you better go find somebody else to take you because we're going to McDonald's. <laughs> I am so proud of you, Joe. Thank you so much for the call. Wow. one eight hundred five eight hundred 800 800 tom is their telephone number. James on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Hi, James. No, hi, Tom. Hi. Uh, quick question. Uh your listeners, your audience in Southern California, just curious, what, what is the percentage of, uh, of Latino people? Uh, the last I saw, it was approximately 40%. Now, because of that, is that the reason you give, uh, you push so hard that you tell, you, 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 make it, you make it a point to tell your audience that you, you love Latino women and how much you love... Uh, well, what, you think, I'm gonna have, you think I'm going to have sex with women just to get an audience? No, 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 no. To make People your- who have seen me in public know that I date Latinas. They know it. People who have right. seen me at Staples Center. People who have seen me at Dodger Stadium. People who have seen me around town at various bars and restaurants. They know. Yes, I understand that. But so, so, so why would I, I say it because it's true. I understand. But you, it seems like you, you push that point so much on the radio show. To make your to make your uh, your, your Latin audience happy. no actually actually it? actually I push it so I get more tail. Oh, is that it? Of course, and it works. Look at my MySpace page. Are you kidding? MySpace. I'm glad that's working out for you. I I, I am. I'm I'll a take a look. I, okay, I'm just saying. I, it seems like uh, you, you almost try to badmouth white people. To, when, to give me happy. one. I, I I challenge you to give me one example of of my bad mouthing white people. Well, I can't take your challenge because I can't give you an example. You damn straight, you can't. Okay, calm down. I'm just saying that it seems to me that like you, you get all these uh, Latin calls, like your last call, uh, caller before last. Is, I'm proud to be in a Mex. I'm proud. I'm a proud Mexican. Blah, blah. Why does that offend you so much? What is no, your name, Lou Dobbs? I mean, why why is this offend no, you I'm so? I'm not a racist much? guy. I, I'm oh not no, racist. not you. <laughs> Say I'm a proud white man, and that, that, automa- that automatically makes me uh, a racist. I can't that, say that. But no I- one has called and said I am a proud white man, and I have not responded to a call like that positively, negatively, or any way. So you're, this is all in your head. Okay. Well, uh, that, that, that now, and by the way, I know, I know you're a racist, and I know that, that <laughs> this is bothering you. I well, believe me, it's 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 obvious to everybody listening to you, except you. Yeah, yeah, I'm not a racist, Tom. I've dated many right. Latino women just like you. I think they're. Well, that doesn't make you not a racist. By the way, that doesn't make you not a racist. Racist means you doesn't you don't you don't like another race, right? Why would I date? a Well, no, I, I actually it means more than that. I mean, for example, it means you don't do business with other races. You don't hire other races. You don't invite them to your house. I mean, there's a lot that goes into being a racist. Well, uh, you call me a racist all day. It doesn't really. It's not going to bother. And let me let me give you a little radio 101 here, okay? If 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 forty percent of my audience is Hispanic, then I should do everything I can to make uh, Latinos feel welcome when they listen to this show. I'm glad that's my do. job. And I'm glad. I'm, I hope they start listening to you more and taking your advice and, and stop popping out all these kids. Oh, but you're not a racist. Here we go. But you're not a racist. I know. I'm not a racist. I know. I just like. I know it's Lou Dobbs Jr. Family. calling in here. What was that? Lou Dobbs Jr. Lou Dobbs Jr. Yeah, that's. I knew you were gonna. I knew you were gonna pull the, the racist card on me. Because that's it. what you I'm are. That's because that's what you are. Not okay. I, I can sit and argue with you all day. There's no point in me trying to trying to tell you that I'm not a racist. But you know, that's if you want to think that, that's fine, Tom. Uh, it, it, it's clear to all who are listening. Uh, that's that's bueno. Very good. That's well. That's uh, also very mature of you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I'll keep listening, even though... Uh, even That's good. Uh, we welcome everybody. Racists, uh, racial separatists, Nazis, a- a- anybody with uh, the ability to report to the authorities that they are listeners, I- I'm all in favor. Wonderful.
Thank you for your time. Even you. Very nice. Unreal. I think that guy's a Corolla listener. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Michelle on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How Hi. are you? I'm good. Good, good. Well, I just wanted to call and say hi and tell you I'm a about a two-year listener, first-time caller. Uh-huh. And I just wanted to tell you thank you. Thank you for changing my life, changing my sense of thought. Let me explain. I'm a 40-year-old lesbian, okay? Uh-huh. I got involved with a lady back in 1995. I was the age of 27. She was 21. And as you know, the first five years of a, of a relationship goes fine, and then the second five uh, or the rest of the, the years just everything goes downhill. You start looking at other people. Other people start looking at you. You just go in different directions. Okay. Uh, this person, I mean, we live together. And mind you, I did not want her to live with me. I invited her to live with me in 2000. She was going to school full-time, Cal State Northridge, okay, for a psychology major. Mind you, I was not asking her to move in with me to get into her panties. I was offering my help because she was tra traveling from East L.A. to Northridge, 26 miles, okay, back and forth, okay, and I was offering my services. She didn't rip me off or anything like that, but later on, about maybe two years later, she drops out of college, okay, due to not having any financial aid or not being able to get any more money from her parents. You know, and before then, she, was, she kept telling me that she was lazy. And believe it or not, I did not see it. But later on, I, I started seeing little things, and she was the type of person to complain about something but not willing to do anything to make it better. And, you know, little by little, things just started to erupt. So finally... In May of 2006, I just called it off. I, I just said, I, I just can't take it anymore. And you know what, Tom, after listening to you, I realized that no matter what, I don't care how big a woman's boobs are, I don't care about her pedigree, I don't care about how deep her pockets are, I don't ever, ever plan on getting into a relationship again. I mean... You never say never. I'm a woman who never say says never, but it's not worth it. No. It's not worth it. You know, and I listen to your show every day, and you know what? It's the same for gay people as straight people. We have the same problems. We pay tax. Same thing. Okay. And with this this thing with gay people wanting to get married, I mean, they should think, do they really want to get married? I'm I've said that as you've heard a million times. I've said gays and lesbians have the perfect crime. When you've got somebody who's dying to have this commitment from you, you can say, well, honey, I'd love to marry you, but it's illegal. Mm -hmm. I'd give anything if they would ban marriage among straight people. Exactly. And you know what? <laughs> people, people tell me that I sound like one of these religious right-wing people. It, it's not that. Uh, you, 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 where do we live? We live in California, the highest population for divorces. Am I right or wrong? Of course. Please correct me. If oh, I'm wrong. yes. Okay. By a mile. There, and I know you said before there aren't any benefits of marriage for men today. I say there aren't any benefits for anyone, a man or a woman, because men complain just as much as women. Well, I would imagine also uh, if you had two women in a marriage, mm -hmm. uh, the judge would have a very hard time deciding uh, whose wealth to take and award to the other. Well, let me tell you, I have these friends who are quote-unquote married. They're, that's another thing. They're not married. It, they, they had a ceremony. They had some type of ceremony down there in the, the Van Nuys courthouse, and they call it a – it's not a marriage. Come on. Unless you went to Boston – or Canada, which are the the two places that I know of where they legalize gay marriage, and maybe they come back here to live. They're not married. That's just a ceremony. But they call themselves a married couple, and they're not. And supposedly they have this lawyer drew, drawing up papers, or the lawyer has already drawn up papers 
saying, you know, if one dies or so, something like that, one will get something else. But, you know, it's still not worth the hassle. You know, you you cannot put a price on freedom. You cannot put a price on independence. It, it, you just can't. I totally agree with that. And how much have you enjoyed your time alone? Well, here's the thing. You, you won't believe this. Remember I told you earlier that I cut the relationship off in, 2000, uh -huh. in May of 2006? Yeah. But here's the thing. We still live together due to financial difficulty. As you know, it's very expensive to live in California yes. uh, uh, alone, but now it's just strictly platonic. I mean, Oh, look at that. So she evolved into your roommate. Yes, exactly, exactly. And even before we broke up, people were saying, Michelle, you never acknowledge uh, Daisy as your girlfriend. And I didn't. I, I never did. It's, it's not that I didn't want to. It's just that, you know, I, 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 I just never did. I just never said, this is my girlfriend, Daisy, uh, or this is my wife. Well, I never say this is my wife because gay marriage isn't legal here. Right. Um, but, you know, I, again, I don't ever plan on getting involved in a serious relationship again. That was my, my one relationship, and I feel that it's going to be my last. Now, will I date women? Sure, I'll date them. Absolutely. But... Uh, a serious relationship, it's just too many complications. That's impl right. Implications. I, I mean, it, 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 I tell people about you. I said, he's been married four times. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, four times. Which, by the way, I mean, if I even if I was married once and the marriage failed the first time, I don't think I would have done it three more well, times. Probably most people would have, but see, I had parents who were married for 40 years. And I told them that. And you felt that it was the thing to do, to get married and have a, uh, a married life, right? Worse than that, I thought there was something wrong with me. I wasn't wrong doing it right. Oh, yes, I thought I wasn't doing it right. I picked the wrong people. I wasn't uh, sensitive enough. I didn't take out the garbage enough, whatever. I was. I suckered into all of that stuff when the reality is... There's no reason for me to be married. I don't need marriage. I don't need a roommate to help me afford my house. And you know I, what? I tell people, even if two people get married, it doesn't matter if they're a gay couple or a straight couple, don't get anything together. Have your own account. That's right. Have your own uh, savings, your own credit card. It, just, believe me, it's going to be a mess in the end. It, it's going to be a mess. And I tell people about you, and they say, oh, he's just bitter. He, he, he's he's going to wind up lonely in the end. And I said, okay, let's say he's bitter, okay? But don't you think he's learned his lesson? And what do they say? They said, well, he's wait until he gets old. Wait until he gets old. And I said, well, he has said that with the money he has saved, and you correct me if my, I'm wrong, with the money that you save and have saved uh, from not being married, you can hire the most competent and educated people to take care of you whenever that time comes. And they, in turn, tell me, well, it's different when you are married to someone. No, it's not. And, and okay, because you can be you to married. To, you can be. I'm going to tell you why. Yeah, okay. Because you can be married to people who leave you. Well, my uh, answer to that was, just because you're married doesn't mean that your husband or your wife is going to take care of you. You would That's expect right. that. You would expect that. But I mean, I don't know. It, it, sometimes it makes me feel. Am I wrong? No. Because no, you're not. Because uh, we had a story on here uh, about a week or two ago uh -huh. about a woman who was arrested for the way she was not taking care of her mother who lived with her, who was diabetic, uh -huh. and her daughter. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the fact that you are related to somebody guarantees you absolutely nothing. And on top of that, uh, if the divorce rate, let's take straight people, if the divorce rate is 50%, and I think among gay people the rate is even higher, they can't get married, but... The, the number of couplings and uncouplings there are. Mm -hmm. um, 
why would you have a relationship with someone in hopes that they will take care of you when you get old? Let's take gay men, for example. Okay. I, I have many gay male friends. Okay. And, and everyone I know, no matter how old they get, they want their partner to be, you know, fresh, young, scrubbed uh, thing from the Midwest. That's what they want. Oh, really? Or Italy or whatever. That's what they want. So you are playing a game that eventually the 18-year-old is not going to pay any attention to you. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. And so it, 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 it's, it's a fool's game. Why get into a relationship with somebody for that purpose? Because at least half of the people who get together don't end up together. So while you're paying for somebody's boob jobs and their Yves Saint Laurent uh, purses and their shoes mm -hmm. and their uh, college tuition and all the things people stupidly pay for, mm -hmm. that person will take what you've given them and move on somewhere else. Well, before I go, Tom, I have a question for you I was curious about. And I, I don't think uh, I've heard you speak on this, or maybe you have and I missed the show. Now, you said during your marriages that uh, you have paid for, for abortions, correct? Well, it, it was not all marriages. Uh, oh. Only one of them was a marriage, and the other three oh. I was not married. Oh, okay. But have you, you paid for four abortions or multiple? Yes, okay. because I, w I wanted them to be done, and I wanted to make sure they got done. Okay. Now, the the first abortion that you pay for, or even the second abortion, were you a successful person? Nothing like today. Okay. Uh, because my question was going to be if you were successful or moderately successful, uh, did you ever think about getting a vasectomy? Um, well, I've discussed this on the air many times, and uh, I've had bad experiences with doctors over the course of time. And so uh, the idea of a doctor playing with the family jewels is a little daunting for me. But I am a religious user of condoms, and I also am a big talker, and I talk to everybody I ever have sex with and make sure that if they uh, got pregnant, they would take care of it the way I would want them to take care of it. And uh, in many cases, when, when they said they weren't sure or they said uh, absolutely not, they were gone. <laughs> Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. My take on your listener base is that they are very subpar in the intelligence IQ department. Oh, and you know, it's, it's, really, it's got to be a problem to have low self-esteem the way you do. You really should not see yourself that way. I mean, uh, I'm sure you're much more intelligent than you give yourself credit for. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom like his show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Don't forget Flash Friday coming up right after Memorial Day. That's right. Wide open telephones on the Tom like his show. Jeremy on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hello, John. Hello, Jeremy. How are you doing, Father? I'm doing great. Oh, it was wonderful to speak to you. I know. I just have a, a quick comment before a question. Uh, I thought the last caller was really refreshing. Which one? Uh, uh, the lesbian woman who was talking yes. about... Yes. Uh, I just thought it was really insightful what she said. And uh, more people should listen to gays, I think. Well, I think that uh, gays and lesbians have a lot of the same experiences as straight people in relationships... Uh, but because uh, a lot of people are freaked out by people who are gay and lesbian, they're, they're not really paying attention. Uh, gays and lesbians have more in common with us than most people would ever admit or want to know. Absolutely. Um, and that kind of ties into my question. Uh, the caller before that, uh, the, the uh, guy who you were calling a racist, was talking about uh, how you referred to the Latino community too much. Uh, you made a comment uh, about him being a Adam Carolla listener. And uh, I'm a big fan of you, but I'm also a huge fan of Adam Carolla. And I was uh -huh. just wondering, uh, what, uh, if, what kind of relation do you have with him, or what do you think of him? What do I think of Adam Carolla? Well, mm -hmm. Adam's been very successful for a long time. He's, uh, he's had a very lucrative career. Um, I respect his business acumen. And, um, 
you know, he uh, continues to uh, uh, expand uh, his horizons. I, I think uh, very highly of him as a businessman. Cool. Well, Tom, uh, it's great to speak to you. I'm a daily listener. I love what you say, and uh, I just hope that more people will tune in and really listen to you. I was one of those listeners who, when I first heard you when I was, like, 16, I had a girlfriend. I said, this guy is retarded. He's just bitter and whatever. And then uh, things changed. I got to college. I heard you, and I said, this guy makes complete sense. Everything you say is true, and I appreciate you for it. Can you please uh, take me out with a bong hit? I certainly can, Jeremy. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Albert, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Uh, um, I'd like to comment on, on that Heather Mill picture on blowmeuptom.com. Yeah. As I was telling Dino there, it's brutal, man. It's... Thank you so much for that. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. We were listening to you last night. We are on our way to go get a bite to eat. And, uh, you know, I just kind of said a remark of, like, why do all women want to have control? And she smacked the crap out of my head. She's like, why do you listen to that Tom Likas? He's turning you into a jerk. It's the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> From the deepest reaches of your imagination, it's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Wide open telephones. On this Friday, Nick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Nick. Hello, Tom. Hello, Nick. Long time, first time. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make a comment on, I believe it was the caller, it's about three callers ago, and he was asking you about why do you always, uh, I guess, give props to the Latino community. And I was sit I'm sitting here at work, and I'm just telling myself, you know what, this guy's is racist. And as soon as you called him out, that just, I, I almost spilled my drink. <laughs> You called them right on the spot, and I'm just, I'm just amazed. I just wanted to give you, you know, credit for that. Thank you. And and ask you, how do you do it? <laughs> well, Nick, you know, uh, I've lived in the Southwest for about 25 years. Okay. And um, and I grew up around Latinos in New York as well. Okay. Um, and, and I lived in a, a black and Latino neighborhood as a child. So... I'm as sensitive to to, uh, to to racism as anybody who is the victim of it because I lived around it. And, and you know, and like I'm an Asian person myself. I have a Latino girlfriend, and I grew up around the Latino community. So for him to to say something like that, I automatically sensed that he was a racist. And for you to just pick up on it, I just I was amazed, and I had to call and give you credit on that. I just think racism is old hat. It just isn't cool. I'm not one of those uh, traditional people who goes out on protest marches or boycotts. I just think that racism is going to die of the weight of the stupidity. So so how do we take care of that? Oh, I, well, I, I think the best thing to do is just call people out and move on. Don't form organizations. Don't protest. Don't pick it because that has the opposite effect. The best thing to do when you meet somebody like that caller. Okay is just to treat him with the same disdain you would treat anybody who was a jerk. Oh, man. And, and, and uh, I mean, I'm, I'm 27 myself, so I'm thinking I don't know how to prevent, you know, m my kids or, or, you know, the younger generation or even the older generation how to, you know, to, to I guess, call these racists out. Well, uh, you can't control what other people do, like I tell you with relationships. You can't force people to be like that. I think, just like with drunk driving or smoking indoors, the more people who individually express this attitude, the more it spreads. 
Well, well, I just wanted to call and give you credit on that, Tom. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate it. Can you take me out Kobe style, followed by a bong hit? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. No cough. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going, brother? Going great. Uh, I just wanted to let you know I went to the game on, uh, I think it was Tuesday, the Angel game. Yeah. And this stupid guy was sitting down below me and my uncle. And about in the eighth inning, all of a sudden, I see him go and get down on his knee. And he's got a little note. And uh, all of a sudden, I see a ring in his finger. He's going to propose during the middle of the game on Tuesday. Oh, oh my! Shoot me now! The game, but we were only up by one run. You know, it was a great oh, yeah. game. And here's it, it was a great game. In the middle of it, that was the game with the Indians. I saw that game on TV. Yeah, well, the, yeah, the one that uh, Spire gave up the home run with. But and here he is going to propose, and yet his chick has been checking people out the whole night. Uh, he, he, so, so you think he's delusional? Be, oh beyond God, just you to marry. <laughs> she, she referred to him about five times. Tom, are you serious? Are you serious? Now, did I they mean, put him on? Did they put him on the jumbotron, or this was just no, the, the people? I mean, I could see if he would do it properly, and if he would do it big style, you know, whatever. You're still gay for doing it, but I mean, okay. No, he just in the middle of the inning. I mean, he Ugh. had no idea what he was doing, and then, so anyways, this is how, how women are, Tom, and what I've learned from you. She takes the ring anyways, Tom, takes it and puts it on her finger after she said no. Holy cow. Can't believe it. And then, Can't turn down two months' salary like that. Well, they couldn't have been together for more than, like, three months, it looked like. You know, it was one of those things where he knew he couldn't do any better. But, you know, those ring commercials tell you it should cost two months' salary. Oh, jeez. Well, that's ridiculous. I ain't ever buying a ring that expensive. Why ever buy one at all? Jacker box. You know what you do? You get CZ. You get her something that's like two carrots for a hundred bucks. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. But And then she goes to give him back the ring, Tom, and she drops it. Ah! So they can't find the ring. Oh, my. Tom, it, it, was, it was hilarious. Here, me and my uncle are just making fun of this kid. My, my uncle's like... Oh, this is like a sitcom, you know. It was just unbelievable. Unreal. But I just wanted to say thanks, Tom. You know, I was in a long-term relationship all through high school that did that lovey-dovey stuff. And, you know, after listening to you for the past year and a half, dude, I, I get more ass than a toilet seat, Tom. I'm proud of you, Ryan. And, I, I mean, it's great. Um, I love what you do, what you say. You tell the truth here. And if that girl's out there, I mean, I know she's listening because she's, you know, she's just that type of person. Yeah. Call in. I'll leave my number with you. She can hit me up. I'll, I'll show her what a real man is. <laughs> this guy didn't even do it right. Pump him and dump him, right, Tom? That's exactly right. I love it. I know you just took the last guy out Kobe style, but could you hit me up? I love it Kobe style. There you go, Ryan. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Celine on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I think you're fabulous. Thank you. I have a question. Okay, say you know nothing about money. You you don't know anything about it. When you want to start to invest, where do you start? What books do you start to read just to learn the basics? Well, it says here on the screen that you're how old? Forty. Forty. Why are you asking this question at forty? Um, because I just want to get a, um, uh, I just want to get ahead more. I mean, I have. Yeah, but but ready. the time. First of all, the the time to ask this question was when you were eighteen. Okay. So you've been spending money and saving nothing and running up credit cards all no. these years. No, 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 Tom, that's not true. So you have no debts. I have fifteen hundred dollars in credit card debt. Why? Uh. I don't know. I just well, do. You like paying interest? No, I mean, I pay off my credit cards off basically every month. No, no. Basically isn't good enough. Renting money is the stupidest thing you can do. Okay. 
I mean, what is the point? Nope. Think about it. I don't know what you spent that money on, but I'll bet it was you spending money on something that was on sale and bragging to everybody how much money you saved. Oh, no, Tom, that's not true. It was on an airline ticket for my vacation. But, darling, you can't afford to go on vacation if you can't afford to pay the bill in full. Mm, okay. Your vacation comes when you have saved up enough money to pay the bill. Okay. And not a minute before. Okay. See, investing and saving and preparing for your future is a state of mind. And I know this because I started from zero. And I was almost bankrupt three times, and I did all the stupid things I'm talking about. <sighs> That's why I know what people do. I did them. Okay, but I have some savings. How much do you have? Fifty. Fifty thousand? Yes. Darling, how much interest are you earning on that fifty thousand dollars? Oh, not much. How much? Actually I have no clue. But I have it in four one Ks. Darling, that's that's retirement money. You can't touch that money. All right. And you and you are never going to touch that money. Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. And you see, the only way you're able to save money is if somebody uh, takes out of your paycheck before you see it. Basically, yeah. You you have to change your habits. All Do right. you have anything in savings that isn't in a retirement account? Yes, I do. Well, how much? Thirty. You have thirty thousand in the bank. Let's review. Okay. Uh, you have that money in a bank? It's in the, um, it's in Bank of America, and it's all in CDs. And you have no, but you have no idea how much interest they pay. Oh, for the CDs? Yeah. Less than less than two percent. All right. Let's call it two percent. Okay. Uh, and your fifteen hundred dollars is on what? Visa, Mastercard, what? Visa. Right. What's the interest rate on your Visa card? Sixteen percent. 16%. Yeah. So so let's review. You have $1,500 and you're paying 16% a year to keep that debt going. You've got $30,000 in the bank that you could apply against that debt, earning less than 2%. Mm, okay, I see what you're saying. The bank is making a 14% profit on you. Okay. Do you understand? I understand that. You didn't want to spend your savings. But the point is, you shouldn't be spending money, period. You should. You know, the first thing you need to do is save. And then if, 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 if going on a trip is too much for you to take the money out of the bank and pay for it, you can't afford it. I mean, that money doesn't materialize out of nowhere. I'll bet your Visa card's with Bank of America, too, right? Yeah, how did you know? Everything is at Bank of America. Right. All right, so here's what happens. You borrow $1,500 by a plane ticket, you pay them 16% per year. And at the same time, you give them $30,000 and they say, tell you what, we'll give you 2%. Does that make sense? I can see that doesn't make much sense. So why do you do it? I have it, Tom. I mean, I don't know where else to save the money, but if darling, I want to start investing for the long term, where do I darling, go from here? Darling, we're not to the investing part yet. Okay. Because the first thing you have to do is change your habits. You don't borrow money unless you're buying a house, which you don't have the money to do, or you are, uh, I guess if your car breaks down and you need to get a car loan, I guess that's the only other way you would do it. Other than that, paying 16% per year interest on a $1,500 plane ticket? Outrageous. And what do you pay? The minimum payment every month? Oh, no. I pay like half of that. My car was $3,000, but I just paid half of it this Why did you only pay half of it? I can't stand being broke. Darling, you're still broke. <laughs> I mean, you have to think like an accountant. After you, you, you add up all the money you have and you subtract out all the money you owe, there's a number at the bottom of that page. That's where we get the phrase, the bottom line. Okay? Okay. And that you spent that money, no matter where you got it from, no matter what column you took it from, you spent it. Your first step is to stop doing things like that. Pay your bills. Worry about investing after you've paid off every credit card bill.
The Tom Likas Show.